by Designs and I'm your host, Andrew Whitfield-Cook. Joining us today is Sarah DiLorenzo. She's an author, a TV presenter and a clinical nutritionist. And today we'll be talking about the 1010 Kickstart Diet. Welcome back to Wellness by Design. Sarah, how are you? Good morning. I'm really well. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, madam. And I just want to say thank you so much for having me. I always love being a guest on this wonderful podcast, Wellness by Design. So I'm really excited to chat with you today. (laughs) Thank you so much. Hey, um, we've got a lot to talk about today, and it's got to do with things that you might not connect with weight loss. Um, You know, we think just calories, just starve yourself and things like that. But in this new book, you talk about detox a lot. So I guess first off the rank, how is detox connected to weight loss? Oh, where do I start? That's just such a wonderful and big question. So first of all, yeah, 1010 Kickstart. I, I want to start with more so talking about what is my, what I think detox is. And as we always know, like we, we, we're, you and I both now, we're in a constant state of detoxification through our kidneys, our liver, our gastrointestinal tract and sweating. So we're detoxing right now. But what the 1010 Kickstart is about is about supporting those detox pathways. And so how it's connected to weight loss is clearly when you do, for a few reasons, clearly when you start doing any kind of detox, and I kind of feel like sometimes detox isn't the right word. It's more like they're like wellness programs kind of thing because uh, what you're doing on my style of detoxing is supporting detox pathways as opposed to what people think detoxing is, is which is like drinking some kind of concoction or living on lemons for a week or starving yourself and being irritated or getting a whole drinking a whole lot of you know Chinese herbs and no other food or doing so people people think of detoxing when I say that. They, they think of it more like that, whereas for me, it's about supporting those pathways. And so how it's connected to weight loss is, first of all, the programs I run in 1010 Kickstart, I run, I have a one-day, three-day, 10-day, four-week, and they're for different elements. And this is why that's such a great question because it's such a big answer. But to start first and foremost, now I've just gone out on a little tangent, I'll come back and just answer your question directly. When you're doing my wellness program, first of all, you're going to be on eating healthy food, nutrient dense, and you're having a really healthy diet. So you would be removing alcohol, uh, junk food. You're just unjunking your life basically. So there is that whole, there is going to be by default a weight loss because you're eating a healthy diet with lots of fruit and vegetables. I also remove common allergens in there so it's a gluten-free program so it's sort of it it ends up being low carbohydrate because the focus is on our nutrient density so I've got lots of fruit in there and vegetables and the good fats and smoothies and different kind everything as much as bringing as many nutrients in as possible as I said to support detox pathways so that is one reason why it is supports weight loss. Another one is we're supporting, we've got a lot of fiber in the di- in, in my programs and the fiber is in the fruit and vegetables and there is some legumes in there. So you're feeding all that good bacteria in your gut and that good bacteria in return is, is support, it reducing inflammation by creating butyrate. So it's, cre- it's bringing down your inflammation markers. It's supporting the gut lining. It's got that boost in antioxidants. We feel great. So because we're really supporting our gut health and bringing down inflammation, that way too, it's making us digest better and in, inadvertently we're losing weight that way. Um, also, I get people to focus on things like stress. So we, in my programs, it's a holistic approach. Stress and weight loss. Stress is a big one. It links to cortisol. Cortisol, of course, will link to ghrelin. It's a cycle. Um, sleep is another one I address. Lack of sleep is linked to, is linked to weight gain. And in my, again, in my programs, I focus on that lifestyle element of bringing sleep in there too. And when you sleep well, compliance is better. When your compliance is better, you stick to the program. Um, and in turn, we know that lack of, you know, lack of sleep is linked to weight gain. That's just showing that people who will sleep five to six hours a night will lose muscle. People who sleep seven to eight hours a night have a better, have, have more lean when they, when they are doing a calorie restriction they actually are more inclined to, to, to lose body fat. So, 
as, it, as I said, like there's a few parts to that, answers to that question that um, why these detox programs of mine are linked to weight loss. But in, in general, in sim- just simply, you're just taking a lot of fast food, processed foods, refined foods, takeaways, um, you're eating on the fly, not eating properly, not eating all day because you're in meetings and then pigging out at night, which I see a lot of people doing, um, too many liquid calories, coffees, soft drinks, um, artificial sweeteners that we know are linked to weight gain, people just grabbing Cokes and mm-hmm. sugar hits throughout the day at the office and, and, and people putting artificial sweeteners in, in beverages or all that kind of stuff. So all of that stuff is those things that people, pe- bad, bad habits, they're removed because you have to focus on the forefront of what you're doing is a detox or a wellness plan plan which means food prep, which means regular meals and therefore weight loss. Okay, so I've so, given you a big, um, huge answer. Sorry, Andrew, but, I, that's a, well, but and, there, and there is a lot that, to it. I've got it. 20 questions. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so, so, so one thing that you said early on was that we're detoxing mm-hmm. all the time. And, mm. you know, I've got to say, I've got to sort of take up the naysayers of natural medicine here. And... Mm. Um, you know, like I've, I've seen time and time again these people trying to dismantle uh, naturopathic medicine as, you know, hogwash and things like that, that we're doing detox all the time. Having said that, I will always remember this greengrocer next door to where I used to work. This is many years ago. And yeah. he was one of the naysayers and he didn't believe me that you can influence liver detoxification by certain supplements. And so on my days off, he apparently came in and he bought a quote-unquote fat metabolizer, which I think are poorly <laughs> named supplements, might I add, but anyway. Um, but he bought one of these things which had choline and acetylmethionine and a couple of herbs, um, St. Mary's thistle, caledonium, kynanthus, blah, blah, blah. And, and um, he without my knowledge, took way above the recommended dosage. So instead of like two tablets to four tablets a day, he took 10 at once. And he almost immediately broke out in this massive acneic rash, like just incredible, comedones everywhere. And he came in when I came back to work and I went, what did you do? (laughs) Do?" So there was this whole realisation, this stuff changes things and I think there's two things there one you don't tell me it doesn't work it does two Mm -hmm. it needs to be under the care of somebody who responsibly knows what they're doing don't do it without supervision oh absolutely 100% I don't yeah no I um that's that's such an interesting story though that he took 10 why would what was the whole idea of taking 10 he simply didn't believe that it would did he just want yeah, isn't that fascinating? I always say and to people was... when they, yeah, I just say to people, like sometimes, you know, historically I would probably be um, a little bit more, I would debate more, I'd be more argumentative or I'd be trying to get my point across. And now because I know it works and because as a hmm. clinician who's been running these programs for 20 years and I see it works, the deep, like a lot of people who will come in and do a one-on-one detox with me where we do, do supplements as well as as the wellness as well as food and food and exercise and lifestyle. I always say to them, okay, great, let's go and get all your, let's start this on you know the first of March or whatever. Can you please go and get all your bloods done? Get all your, and let's and then let's really look at your liver. Get I want to really focus on a full liver studies. I want to get all that done. Then we'll do our four weeks. And then I'll say, now, could you please go back to your GP, go and get another pathology form. I want, right, let's have a look at your liver. You'll see that the Billy Rubens down, you'll see the, and even, I've even had pathology places contact me and say, what have you done with that person? You know, what have you done? And I've just done, a, I've, I have done a, a, a holistic uh, detox mm. with supplements, mm. with diet, with lifestyle, mm. with everything. And yeah, they absolutely yeah. work. And I just think it just comes down to, my response to people like that is when people are like that, I just go, well, um, you know, I don't need to prove anything to you with this. Um, the proof is there. It works. Uh, people keep coming back. People are getting great results and the evidence is there. So, 
I, I yeah, like you're to ask them a get question. Mad. What's I your like to ask question? Them a question. And I, well, my question is: so, when so if somebody said detox doesn't work, I say, okay, so, um, so N-acetylcysteine doesn't mm. help with paracetamol toxicity because it doesn't help biotransformation of that um, chemical to a glucuronide. Is that what you're telling me? Because yeah, see, that's a drug back? therapy. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's no one of the things I use. Because is the yeah. antidote yeah. for parasitic Correct. toxicity. Correct. So Absolutely. part of the issue is perhaps sometimes that we're not using the same vernacular. Like yeah. we talk detox, they talk biotransformation of chemicals. Mm. We say... Um, you know, an erroneous comment, which has now been corrected by Dr. Brad, Brad Leach, and that was a leaky gut syndrome. There's no syndrome. We have intestinal hyperpermeability. Y you see what I mean? So we yes. need to be learning the same language and speak in their language if they're going to understand it sometimes. But yeah. anyway, we're getting off track and, and that's me getting off track, not you, Sarah. So <laughs> let's, I, let's, I always let's... say to you, keep me on track because I do love to chat and I do go out on tangents and, yeah, if anyway. Well, I'll warn our listeners that Sarah and I had a, a brief, <laughs> I say the word brief in vernaculars, but we had a brief <laughs> prep chat a few weeks ago and the prep chat is longer than the podcast. But anyway, um, so... <laughs> Trying We've to spoken. work out what was important and what we needed to get across in our chat, and then we just couldn't. It was exciting because we have to share, and then we chatted. So much amazing, and we we chatted, and we love the industry, and yes. we love what we do. We love sharing this information, we and we want to get the right stuff across. So um, the next question that I came up with your previous answer was: you spoke about food preparation, things like that. Um, for people, let's say travelers. People are now travelling overseas more after COVID. You've certainly got people who, as an industry, as their job, they travel. So salespeople, for instance, they travel and these are typically the people that eat poorly. They eat restaurant food day in, day out. They snack on the road with poorly nutritious food. How can they get better at eat? Or how can they eat better food on the road? I know. That's, I get asked that question a lot and it's a fabulous question. And one of my first responses to that is where there is a will, there is a way, definitely. And I myself have been on the road and it depends how much you want something because, look, it's very easy to wake up and just, you know, ad hoc your day, you ad lib the day, you have no thought. And a lot of people just do that now. They wake up and I'll say to people, what are you eating today? Oh, oh, I'll do a recall of just general patients and I will get back to answering your question and I'll just say to them, can you just tell me what you ate in the last 24 hours? Oh, I don't know. I woke up. Oh, I just ate the kids' toast and I walked past a cafe and I, I just grabbed that. So they have not given any thought anyway to what they're going to be eating. It's not just travellers. It's people who are in their general day-to-day -day life who do not even consider what they put in their body as a priority. And I always say to people, first, they just don't even think of it and they can be eating ridiculous things throughout that. Oh, I had a bite of that. I had that biscuit. Oh, I, someone was getting sandwiches, so I just grabbed a sandwich. Oh, we were just all getting Thai and then I... So they don't even know what they've eaten and they don't think of that. And for me personally, what I put into my body is, the, is, is something that I would have generally planned every day within uh, probably the night before. I'll usually do a three-day prep cycle. Now, I've been on book tours where I've been in and out of hotels and, and I've been running around bookstores and jumping on and off planes for two weeks straight when I did my last big book tour last year. And I was in that exact position. So I'm someone who, as a priority, will always put my health first and what I eat. I'm not going to just eat something. And I don't ever want to get to the point where I'm starving and I'm then left with a poor food choice. And I think that there's always a solution. So first of all, the key to success is prep, first and foremost. And mm -hmm. for me, you know, I would, whenever I travel, I'll look for local markets. Um, I'll look for <clears throat> if I'm getting off somewhere, if I, at the airport, there's always nuts, there's always fruit, there's always protein bars if you want to. There's always a solution somewhere. There's always a, a bakery, a, not a bakery, a cafe where you can, uh, with where they make sandwiches, like, and you can just ask something, would it be okay if X, Y, Z? 
or it depends where you're traveling you can take your food with you i've always got nuts and fruit in my bag and i've got different things like backup protein bars i've always got backup protein powders and so i'm always and then if i walk past a supermarket and especially when I was on the book tour, I would walk in and there's many times where I've been stuck somewhere and if you've got a supermarket near you, you are completely fine and I have walked in somewhere where I've had either fast food or I go into a supermarket and I've walked in and I've grabbed a salad bag and I have grabbed some salmon, hot smoked salmon, and I have grabbed a plate. I've even put some smoked salmon in the salad bag and bought a plastic fork and eaten it. Like there is where as the nuts because I want to eat something that I feel good at, good with as opposed to just walking past something and going, oh, whatever, I'll just get some Maccas or I'll just, ugh, I just won't eat. So it but depends you know, on you your know, level of You know motivation. what's really interesting? Well, you know what's really interesting to me is um, that by no means am I pure in my diet or lifestyle, right? Um, You're letting out your secrets now. Everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I, like I've... I take my hat off to these pure people who choose to live that lifestyle and have and breeze through, and and I really do. I applaud them. Um, Kylie Ezard, if you're out there, I applaud you. She's this incredible, vibrant naturopath that just lives, walks a talk. But anyway, um, I am not that. Having said that, without this, um, w- without the thought process of, um, you know, needing pure food or any of that clean lifestyle, without that process, I must have veggies. I must have fresh food in my diet. Like, like it's this thing. And it's not a... You could, do you crave it? I, I, I've, if I ever go without veggies, I'm missing something. I like my veggies. I love my mushies. And if I'm mixing something in with a protein powder, don't give me a flavoured protein powder. Give me vanilla and give me berries or mango or yeah. fruit, something mm. natural. It's really interesting how you, you you can get nature similar, but you can't get natural from a flavour. No, you can't. No, I have I have a punnet of blueberries every day or strawberries every mm. single day, and um, without fail, I. Um, crave them and I will I have fruit every morning now it might have it usually has nuts and it will have yogurt over it Uh, but yeah I'll definitely have a bowl of fruit every morning and I actually crave it and I think sometimes when you think about you know why why we're craving things you know that you can go that one step further and think about your gut microbiome and and your gut brain axis and and all of those microbes who absolutely love feeding, love feeding on all of that. That's their food. They thrive. All those good, gorgeous populations in our gut microbiome will flourish on all of that fibre from your vegetables and berries. And, I mean, they, they, they love that. And so that's that messaging. I believe that what we crave is very much from our, our gut. Our gut is dictates that. Yeah, and... And, and I think you've really harped on something there, and, and that is that we know that you can change a microbiota within days, at least, you know. Yeah, days, yes. Of, of, of eating a vegetable-based diet or a, fr- a plant-based diet. Um, so are those people that crave fatty foods and, and um, fast foods, has their gut microbiota changed to a certain profile and can that be changed reasonably quickly to a different profile with plant-based foods such that here is the next question how long does it take before you really start to get rid of those cravings for the fatty foods okay there's a lot of habit in there's a lot of psychology Okay, so I think that people who crave fast and fatty foods, first of all, first and foremost, I think that is, yes, it's a way of life. It's a taste thing. I think they fancy the taste. To me, that's when I think of that, that's all that kind of mouth microbiome. People love eating fatty foods and no one loves the feeling of fatty foods in their gut because they get bloated and distended. So so that's first and foremost, like they're and flatulent and, 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 and their stool smells and all that kind of stuff. And they, it's constipation associated with that. 
So it's definitely it, it, it is it is also the microbiome to a degree, but I think it's also it's it's habit, it's taste, it's a very much a mouth thing. And to, in the other part of your question, one of the first signs I see, and this is when people start doing any one of my programs, who are people who were living on processed, refined, fast foods, fatty foods, you know, all that kind of stuff. One of the first things I see is constipation. And I always, and people go, oh, I've started your, you know, this diet and I'm constipated. Why am I constipated? I'm like, well, we're feeding different bacteria. And they know we need to grow some good colonies. Right now, yeah. we haven't got the colonies there who are going to, who, the, we haven't got all that, that wonderful lactobacillus in there, those big colonies of that and the bifidobacterium that we want because you haven't been feeding them what they all the prebiotics that they love, all the bananas, asparagus, onions, garlic, leek, all that wonderful prebiotic food isn't a part of that person's diet. So we need once you start introducing that, we need to feed them so they can grow and people can get those health benefits. So I will say to people, in about two weeks, you'll start everything will I so I tell people two weeks when they start to get those that constipation. One of my first things is I say we just need to bring a bit of maybe just bring a fibre supplement in, bring some psyllium husk into the diet to start getting some motility and drink lots of water is one of my big encouragements. But, yeah, within, within days we can see a change in the populations and then within about yeah. two weeks I see the gut settling down and I see people going back to regular bowel movements. Yeah. So that's my and, clinical and experience. Well, well, that that parallels with um, what naturopaths who specialised in liver detox have told me in that the first two weeks you can actually see an uptick of liver enzymes if they're out of whack. Yeah. And then after yeah. the two weeks they start to settle down. And that rings true of you're changing the microbiota, but the bile mm -hmm. is yet to, the liver is yet to wake up and start to secrete bile, which is our natural body's laxative, of course. So yes. that's really interesting. Mm, I'm just saying what I've seen clinic. Yeah, it is. It is so interesting. Like the body's just, it's fascinating. I love that. <clears throat> and this yeah. is why I love doing these podcasts. We just, yeah, it's amazing. Well, okay. So, so next question then is when do we start detoxing? Like, like when should we, when do we, is it, does the clinical part of the detox only happen after two weeks? Um, or do you feel people, start to wake up in three days and go, oh, my God, my life's turned around? Every set that, okay, everyone, one, I, one thing I do know is we're very individual with that because it depends what our start point is. So that if your start point is someone who is like a banker, who I, I have a lot of these patients, like, you know, but, uh, men who are in their mid-50s, they're at the big boozy lunches every day, they're having two bottles of wine a day. I mean, it depends. So someone like that is going to notice significant, but they're also going to go through, it's going to be harder for them. The symptoms are going to be harder. Just things like mm -hmm. our blood pressure will elevate, first of all, because there's the stress. Then there's coming off the alcohol that can impact cardiovascular health. It, dep like, it depends. So what I'm saying is it depends where you're coming from. Someone who's just, who, is, who is a healthy person who 80% eats really well, does regular, regular exercise, the transition's not going to be that big. They might feel a little bit of a headache or they might feel uh, a little bit of a struggle or some fatigue, but they're not going to get fatigue. those just, yeah, that, that bit of fatigue starting the detox around day three, day four. But I always say to them by day, just day one and day two are really quite easy because they're just the adjustments. Day three, day four, day five can be really hard for some people with low energy. Um, just that's when things are really starting to con reconfigure. I always say to people by day six, by day seven, you're going to start to feel great. And then you'll see all of those wonderful uh, clarity of the brain fog lifts, clarity of mind by Usually within the two-week mark, most people will have better sleep, higher libido, um, gut working well, um, better, much better mood, happy, lowered stress, all of those kind of stuff. But there is that transition, but it better does, skin. yeah, it does better skin, yeah, the glowing as well. 
it does actually, but it depends on your start point where you're coming from. Because there's some people, sure. I will make the, I will make them take a B vitamin before they do the detox, just because I'm worried about the neurological system, especially if they're big drinkers. The biggest one I find the struggle with is more coming off alcohol, because I, whilst, and one thing I've d- done with my detoxes is, is I haven't stopped coffee. I did, I used to stop caffeine. But I then I just don't think it's I didn't I, the compliance was really poor. I mean, for well, a lot of people, therapeutic they have, activities. Yes, well, I'm very pro coffee. I'm a very pro caffeine. I love it. So I love. I mean, I could go on about caffeine right now, but I'm not going to go on that tangent because I want to come back to your. I will. Other <laughs> other question. I, 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 you can in a second. I want to come back to your other question. When do we do these detoxes? And I always say to people, there's. As a general thing, I always call them the stop, reflect, assess. Okay, so what I find is and what I see is no, people don't really address their health until there's a crisis. Crisis being a a number of things, a diagnosis, the GP telling you you've got to go on statins or, or, or or medications or blood pressure medication. These are all the crisis that people get to. And I'm just like, oh, they're they're pre-diabetic and they're they're being told to go on metformin, et cetera. That to me is like, and so what I I want to do as a practitioner with 1010 Kickstart is I want people a couple of times a year, I would say around four times a year, to spend anywhere from just two weeks just to stop, get your bloods done. If you're someone who's highly stressed especially, get your bloods done, do, give up booze for two weeks, uh, just focus on yourself, focus on a healthy meat eating meal plan, focus on some mental health, um, address not only the toxicity in your life, toxicity from food, alcohol, cigarettes, et cetera, toxicity in relationships, toxicity in your workplace, spend two weeks giving back to yourself, focusing on you, focusing on where you're at so you don't have a crisis. And so it's, I see them as self-love and self-care. So when I do these programs myself, I sit there and I go, what are my goals? Where am I at? What relationships are around me? What, what do I need to address? I go out every day and I walk. I'm nice to myself. I take myself to the gallery because I like that. I take myself for a massage and I take myself shopping. I'm actually really kind to myself and I go in to the GP and I just think, do I need to go to the dentist while I'm doing this healthy diet? And I do mm-hmm. breathing exercises, meditations, affirmations. I set goals. I address the goals throughout it. And by the end of it, I feel really good that I've done something to my, for myself and I feel great about my health. And then I will go back to my regular life, which isn't far from that. I live mostly like that anyway. But then again, I'm in this industry and I'm, I'm presenting on TV. I'm thinking about it. I'm reading studies every day. So this is my world anyway. But yeah. I take it that one step further. And what I'm encouraging people to do is the same thing. Stop. As mothers, as, as partners, as employees, as employers, we put ourselves at the, at the end of, at the back of, of the list. We, and as I said, so many, there is very few people I know who really focus on self-care holistically and it, as, until they get to a crisis. And it's when it doesn't matter how much money you've got, if your health's not there, you haven't got anything. It's, if you're sick every day or dis you know, low mood, low energy, low libido, stressed, that's not a life. That's not life. That's not living. That is, that is just, well, what would you say? It's not, it's not, I love everything about chi and vitality and feeling fabulous and energized and nothing feels better when your systems are working well, you know? But you've, it's a very important place to be in, like this self-love, and we're talking about vagal nerve stimulation here. So mm-hmm. when people are eating stressed and they're, you know, self-loathing and things like that, um, you've got that cortisol response, you've got vagal nerve in inhibition. Um, so when somebody is there, how do you get them to be where you are? Like that's a big change. Uh, okay, so if you were, if you are, first thing I say to people when to get to where I am, you need to do what I do for three months because all right. the research shows that a human being to change, a, to create a way of life needs 66 days. It's not three weeks right. or two weeks. 
And you need to be doing something every single day for 12 weeks. That's why my first book, The 1010 Diet, which I'm actually rebranding The 1010 Plan because it's not really a diet, it's a way of life. I pick 10 weeks because I want to help change people's lives. So if you want to really make a change in your life, first of all, A, you have to want it and it's got to be something that you actually personally want. That's first. If you don't want it and you're doing it for someone else, you will fail because you're not doing everything you've got to do is because you want it. Um, yeah. And then be consistent every day you wake up and you can't, it's not going to happen on, automatically. Write down your food plan, get your food chopping done. I have my food three days. I go, I have a two day work on an, over a seven day period. Twice in a week, I will do my food prep. Now I don't sit there and prep food out, but I get the food. I do the shopping I want for the, to make, to prepare the food that I want. So yeah. I always will have the food ready to go if I'm in a rush and I can literally pour that into that and have that and bang and I'm done it in I've done it in a minute like I've got always got quinoa cooked I've always got chia seeds soaked if I want to I've got if I'm in a rush in the morning I can just throw soaked chia seeds with a bit of berries and I'm out the door you know I'm, I've got a bre- healthy breakfast like that nuts on top so I've all, I've got my staples all there there's ready to go and we and I've even got I've got like my um everything that I work with gut health as well so I've always got sauerkraut in the fridge and um, I've got kombucha to grab and I've always just, I've got miso paste. I've got everything in there. Like it's just, and it's preparation. It's simple and wanting it. It's basic. It says, you know, and being consistent. Yeah. Um, it will come really naturally. It that, comes naturally. Yeah, but the gravitation too, as in I want to move towards something rather than I have to go away from that, you know, to leave something that I love behind rather than that that mental picture to gravitate something towards which you want to be you so it's a it's more of a pull rather than a push if you like um i want to add it's, something it's a really to that, interesting though. flip yeah it is i just want to add to that that once a week so i love fine dining it's just i love it i love beautiful wine i really enjoy that i still would do i like i would still eat out and that's somewhere nice you know, whenever I, whenever I wanted to, and I would, and I'm actually, and, and I would enjoy, if I'm going to go out and enjoy food and out, and I'll have a glass of wine or two with it, I have no problem with that because that's about balance and having a healthy balance too. So it's not, I don't live all one way. Like if we were to go out for dinner, I would definitely be looking at the wine list and having, sharing a bottle of wine and I would definitely taste some dessert. I would definitely do that because to me, Um, Now, I'm not going to go out and order a pizza and a big carbonara and eat garlic bread and that kind of stuff. I would probably do more just food that's that's beautiful. For me, it would be about beautiful produce. Um, But, you know, I I don't know. However, whenever I would do that, that might be twice in one week. It might not be for two months. It's just it's not a regular thing, but I'm not, you know, I still eat out and enjoy it. Yeah, reward. But it's reward rather than punishment. I guess that's where I was sort of going. That sort of pulling towards something that you want to do rather than Mm -hmm. being hounded with a stick from behind, you know. Um, (laughs) I think it's a really important (laughs) mindset. And, you know, if if, even if you think about the mind chemicals, you know, the cortisol and whatever else, vagal nerve stimulation, that's got to do with this reward sort of thing, dopamine, for instance. Um, yeah, the neurotransmitters. Because you yes. will talk another hour. So, so <laughs> you spoke earlier about, you know, people can go through these, you know, uh, transient sort of feelings of unease or disease, um, you know, the heaviness in the liver, the headaches, the rattiness, things like that. Do you give people a certain amount of time and do you give them warning to say, listen, this well could happen because we know what you've been doing, you know, two bottles of wine at lunch for, you know, 30 years or whatever, is you don't you don't clear that without payment. You know what I mean? Um, oh, do uh, you, yes. You, yeah. Do you have a set oh, look, sort of honestly, repertoire that yes. you tell people? Absolutely. Like people, like people come in when they want to do this or people would buy the book. And I, I write about it. Like this is this is hard. Like I will tell people this is big changes. It's withdrawal as well for many people. I mean, withdrawal from sugar. Those it's that it's the cravings and it's the headaches and it's. The, I say to people, just take. So my advice is, it's hard. Get through the first two weeks of anything in your home and host. Take it day by day. Take it hour by hour. 
Um, it, there's always herbal teas you can have and there's water and you can have lemon and water and, and just, and I always say to people, it, it is, it is challenging, but you, the rewards are tenfold when you have actually accomplished dietary, a, a complete dietary overhaul. And you're feeling just like you and I spoke about before about, about berries and vegetables. You feel, you feel the, the, the wonders of those foods in your system. You feel alive. You feel rejuvenated regenerated oh, yeah. you feel healthy and energized and fresh and and the lifting of brain fog and the bowels working well and and just and the clarity and, and so I just say to people just get through it just get through it and once you're through it you'll be fine and so no I pre-warn them absolutely because it's they I, would I drop really off if I didn't pre-warn though. them they'd drop off the compliance would be really Yeah, cool. I think it's really interesting, though, about, you know, culture and where we've come from in the past, mum and dad and and all of that sort of thing, what what you grew up learning. Thankfully, um, you know, my dad particularly loved his vegetables and it wasn't a conscious thing that I've taken on. Like I've had my bad fast food times. As I said, I'm by no means pure, but but... There's this gravitation to fresh fresh food. It's really interesting to me when I see people that simply don't eat fresh food. Like it's so alien to me. Um, but I guess this is more and more why they, they need your book. So can you do as a, a briefing? I know this is like going to be like a shotgun <laughs> question sort of thing, but you, you've set it out into chapters. Can you go through what you cover in your chapters of your book for us, please? Yeah, say? absolutely. So, so the 1010 Kickstart is a book. It's in two sections. So there is one section, which is I and I, and I loved writing this book so much. So there's one section, which is all smoothies. It's an A to Z of smoothies, okay? So the A to Z, it starts from arthritis and asthma and then it goes through to menopause and bloating and migraines and osteoporosis and all through the alphabet I've got an A to Z of smoothies for for basically to treat every ailment. Now the reason why I did that was I want people to see food as medicine. So I want people who grab this book to go, oh, God, that's really interesting. I'm someone who's got arthritis. Oh, Sarah's got a arthritis smoothie. I'm going to start my day with this smoothie, which is just full of all these. It's got anti-inflammatories in there. I can't remember that smoothie off by heart, but it would. It, I know I would have turmeric in there. I'd probably have avocado in there, a whole mixture of ingredients. I do that kind of stuff, right? And yep. so I, and some nut butter. And so I want people to start their day with that and I want them to kind of look at that like a prescription pad like for for treatment of disease. So that's for people who are picking up this book who are who have got like an ailment that they can work in to any of the four programs. So I do talk about in the book about rest rest and retest and and reset and and stop reflect assess all that kind of stuff about health in general. And then I've got these four programs. So one's a one day, one is a three day, one is a um, 10 day, and then there's another four week program in there. So the, the one day program is for the people, say, for example, who went out to a wedding the night before and they ate like they had moments to live. They've woken up, they've just gone, oh, I, I'm, I can never eat ever again. I feel absolutely dreadful and whatever, or hungover. And that's a one day, it's a one day reset. So it's all about keeping back into your healthy self. So just waking up going, okay, I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to go to a wedding and eat like I've had moments to live. That's okay. But the next day I'm going to compensate, you know, I am going to compensate and do these one day detox. The next one is a, and I'm going to ask you why you were laughing in a minute, but anyway, (laughs) the next one is my three day detox. So and when I say detoxing, what you'd be eating is you'd be waking up in the morning, you'd have one of those gorgeous smoothies. Lunch would be a fabulous detox salad just with loads of chopped um, chopped vegetables in there and maybe a bit of salmon. And, and dinner might be a beautiful soup with lots of vegetables in there. You might be snacking on things like a bit of apple cider vinegar in water or you might be having some nuts, lots of fruit. Um so the three-day one is basically, and they're all very low, they're very low in sort of um, c- complex carbs. So it is a big, fr- a big focus on fruit and veg. And 
um, and and lean and lean protein. So, for example, let's just say between Christmas and New Year, you went out every day and you were at here and there and it's, and, and Boxing Day, and you've gone, oh, I've put on three kilos, I just feel gross. It's like it's like my New Year, new me. What am I doing? I'm going to do the three day. Oh, Sarah's got a three day of detox. I'll do that for three days and it will get me back on track. The ten day one is for people who have probably uh, pretty stressed. Uh, drinking a bit, not focusing on themselves, um, not really feeling that great, just thinking I just don't feel great, I'm a bit discombobulated, work's not great, I'm not managing stress, I'm just sort of, oh, I'm just going to do this for 10 days. And that one, by you know, you'll lose a couple of kilos, two to three kilos doing that one, and it's just that, that nutrient density, it's more holistic, it's more lifestyle. And then the four-week one is for people who have had a diagnosis of some kind or they've just massively stressed. Uh, they've got issues with liver, issues with gut. That's more the really hardcore liver gut and, and really people who do need to make more of a drastic change. So they're the programs that are within that book. And as I said, all of those programs, you if you've got an ailment and it might be um, hypertension or anything, as I mentioned, you pick one of the smoothies and you work it in to the detox the de- detox wellness program so if that's an ailment and that would be more for the four four week one and um, I've had so many wonderful stories of people writing to me oh Sarah I did your four week oh, like a lady in Adelaide I actually opened an email this morning hi Sarah I live in Adelaide I just want to tell you that I did your four week detox and I've just completed it and my and, and my cholesterol's back into normal range. I've lost seven kilos, of course, which we know three to four of it would have been probably a bit of um, body water in the beginning because yeah. of all the yeah. all of you know the glycogen and blah blah blah. So and then she and I feel really great. I feel so energized and and can I do the 1010 diet? Should I do that? And so like I get stories like that. I get a thousand emails a week, a rep, I think, right now from all my programs, like from the other, the diets and stuff. And and it, my, and my brand has got its own community called the Sarah De Lorenzo Community, where all these people, because there's like a hundred thousand people right now doing my programs, they all interact with each other and share their successes and their before and afters. And and then and for me, the biggest win with this is not people going, oh, "I look hot in a bikini." My biggest win for me is when people go, "I'm." I don't need pharmaceutical medication anymore. I do warn people if you are on blood pressure medication doing any of my programs, you need to, and you start to feel dizzy, you've got to go straight back to your GP. Like I always tell people, right. any signs and symptoms, go to the, because I, unless they're my one on one patient, I always make sure, because what, I'll, what you'll find is you won't start needing these medications and then they'll be, and I don't want people taking medication that they once needed and, won't, and then don't. So yeah, there's a lot of that stuff. And, it's very rewarding. It's um, a solution for everyone, for all for all different, you know, life events and and mm, festivities mm. and yeah. Now, obviously, your book's for sale, but have you got any sort of um, uh, you know guidelines or templates or or things that people can at least whet their appetite with from your site, from your website? I've got um, from okay, so. Hmm. I've got my there. I do have a YouTube channel which has all of my TV segments on it, which we do some book stuff on there oh, as well. Okay, so great. it's just called. So there's a YouTube channel where people can actually see me, um, and it's mostly got. Well, this podcast will go up on my YouTube channel, for example, and it, and every time I'm on TV, it goes to the YouTube channel. If I've done other other things, so radio or that kind of stuff, I try and filter as much onto there as possible for people who are interested. So the books are spoken about there. Um, and then obviously my social media platforms have got, I talk about the books. Um, if people want to know real life stories and they want, if they want to, if they want to feel that if this, if what I do is right for them, they can join my Facebook community and, and just ask the, ask the community. I'm interested in uh, doing but that'll this. that'll be really good okay. about the, that'll, forgive me, sorry for, to cut you off the, that'll be really good for people to see what you do, what you cover on your TV segments because it's practical stuff. So it's, you know, it's very short, sharp and, yep, yeah, I can yeah. learn something from that. I can learn something from that. I think that's a great little introduction and then people can go, okay, now I'm ready to buy the buy the book and embark on the diet. Yeah. Um, and yes. I need to say just as a closing remark, what I was laughing at was when you said yeah. eat, eat like 
what is it? Eat like you've got moments to live. And <laughs> and Sarah Di Lorenzo, I, I hope that we can change people to if they did have moments to live, they'd be picking up a, a punnet of blackberries or raspberries rather than lining up in a fast food store. But thank you for joining us on Wellness by Designs and, and giving us, oh, like, had a... you know, it's always great to chat with you, but I learned little tidbits along the way. It's wonderful. Oh, look, honestly, hand on my heart. Thank you so much for having me. And I really, I always enjoy our chats. I know you and I could talk for hours and hours and hours and hours. And I do hope that, I really do hope did. that anyone is listening, that they feel inspired somehow by our chats to to live their best lives. And you're always a lot of fun. And I do love your little anecdotes as well. So thank you so much for having me. My absolute pleasure, Sarah. <laughs> And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. You can catch up on all the show notes and the other podcasts on the Designs for Health website. I'm Andrew, well, I'm Andrew Whitfield-Cook. This is Wellness by Designs. 